Good day to you all. My name is Dr. Yasser Osman, and I'm going to talk about the anesthetic breathing circuit. A breathing circuit connects the fresh gas supply containing the anesthetic mixture, namely oxygen and the anesthetic gas, from the anesthetic machine to the patient. The basic function of any breathing circuit are to deliver the anesthetic mixture to the patient and eliminate carbon dioxide in the expired gas to avoid rebreathing. The efficacy of anesthetic circuit is its ability to minimize rebreathing at low fresh gas flow. Common component of the breathing circuit is the face mask made of anti-static black rubber or clear latex of different sizes. Some are disposable. They should provide a good fit with the patient face for proper ventilation. Tubing made of an anti-static reusable sterilizable material, example silicon or lightweight plastic single-use material. Relief valve or expiratory valve. The rate at which fresh gas is added to the circuit is higher than the rate of uptake by the patient. Therefore, it is necessary to include a relief valve in the circuit to vent excess gas to the atmosphere. The fourth component is the reservoir bag. Made of anti-static rubber, act as a reservoir for gas, fresh gas flow during expiration. Monitor the patient respiration for manual ventilation if needed and is available in different sizes. Types of anesthetic circuit. Circuit which contains carbon dioxide absorber system, example, the circle system. Circuits which do not contain carbon dioxide absorber system, for example, IRSTPs, McGill circuit, and Bain circuit. Now we are going to talk about the circle system. The component of the circle system, it is so named because its components are arranged in a circular manner. Unidirectional valves are used to ensure unidirectional flow through corrugated tubes. Fresh gas flow enters the circuit from the common gas outlet of the anesthetic machine. Now, this is the component of the circle system. The first component is the fresh gas inlet. Second component is the inspiratory unidirectional valve and the expiratory unidirectional valve. Third component is the flexible breathing tubes, which is corrugated. Fourth is the Y connector, which connect both tubes to the patient. Fifth is the airway pressure relief valve or the expiratory valve, which is this piece. And of course, the reservoir bag and the absorber or the canister that contains the soda lime. Idea of its work. 
Because it is a closed system, the patient is allowed to re-inspire the gas mixture that he expired again and again. This will cause two problems that has to be solved. The first, the oxygen consumption of the patient. This is solved by adding fresh gas flow to the closed circuit system. Most common used flow is 2 to 3 liters per minute, but we can use as low as 250 milli per minute to meet the basal metabolic rate requirement only. The second issue is the carbon dioxide production by the patient metabolism. It must be removed from the circle system or it will accumulate and cause hypercarbia. This is solved by removing the carbon dioxide in the expired gas by soda lime present in the canister which is present in the expiratory limb of the circuit. It is important to monitor the inspired and expired carbon dioxide by capnography when closed circuit is used. Now, this is very important. This diagram shows the principal work of the closed system. First, this is the part where the fresh gas flow through and the patient goes through this corrugated inspiratory tube to the patient. Then the patient will produce carbon dioxide or the expired air, which is presented by the pink color. This will go in a unidirectional flow to the soda lime canister where carbon dioxide is extracted and that gas is pushed through to the inspiratory limb of the circuit. Please take moments to concentrate on this diagram. Soda lime. It is a mixture of calcium hydroxide, 90%, with small amounts of potassium and sodium hydroxide. The absorption of the carbon dioxide by soda lime is a chemical process in which heat and water are generated. If soda lime is not functioning well or exhausted, carbon dioxide will not be absorbed from the expired gas, resulting in a rebreathing of carbon dioxide, which dangerous increase of carbon dioxide in blood. Signs of exhaustion of soda lime means that it cannot perform its function anymore. First is the color of the soda lime. The soda lime is equipped with a color indicator. This means that the soda lime will change its color when it is exhausted. See the difference in the color in the canister, the one with its activity and the one without activity. There is a different color between them. This indicates that the soda lime is exhausted. Increase in the antidal carbon dioxide rapid bounding pulse and hypertension, flushing, sweating, increased oozing from the wound and respiratory acidosis. And lastly, this rhythmias can occur due to the rise of the carbon dioxide levels in the patient. What about the advantage of the circle system? Of course, economic because the gas used is very little compared to other circuits. Warning of inspired gas, humidification of the inspired gas. This is because the patient rebreathes his own expired uh, gases, which is warm and humidified. Prevention of the operation room pollution, of course, because it's a closed system. What about the disadvantage of the circle system? complex design, risk of 
this connection is present risk of miss connection obstruction risk of leak valve malfunction high resistance especially for small children some inhalational agent are unsuitable with soda lime and is unstable example sevoflurane resulting in some chemical reaction that may cause a toxic mixture circle system can be used for pediatric anesthesia during using small reservoir bag one liter and smaller tubing system what about another example of the anesthesia circuit the mcgill circuit another name of it is mapleson a here carbon dioxide is eliminated from the circle by adequate gas fresh gas flow during spontaneous ventilation fresh gas flow must be equal to patient minute ventilation i.e 100 ml per kg to reduce rebreathing so McGill circuit is not suitable for controlled ventilation because the rebreathing is high. Therefore, you have to use very high fresh gas flow to reduce rebreathing. Now, take a few moments to see this diagram. The arrangement of the inlet of the gas and the exit of the gas are the two main component that identify the breathing circuit. In the McGill circuit, the fresh gas inlet is away from the patient. This is the patient. And the exit of the gas or the expiratory valve is very near to the patient. See this picture. The exit is very near to the patient. What happens is the fresh gas flow pushes the expiratory uh, gases through the outlet or the expiratory valve during inspiration. And during expiration, all these uh, gases will come out from the expiratory valve here. While during inspiration, only fresh gas goes through the patient. Please take some moment to review this diagram for exp more explanation. And note during inspiration and expiration. During expiration, the continuous fresh gas flow will push all the gases that contain carbon dioxide out of the circle as you can see here this is what it looks like this is the fresh gas inlet the bag the corrugated rubber tube and the valve or the expiratory valve and here is where the patient is connected so it is effective please do not Forget this during spontaneous ventilation, but not very effective during controlled ventilation. Another type of circuit is the RSTP circuit. This circuit offers minimum resistance to gas flow because no valves are present. Thus, it is the most popular circuit for children. During spontaneous ventilation, the expired gas is allowed to escape from the open end of the bag that acts as expiratory valve. During manual ventilation, the open end of the bag is occluded as the bag is compressed to infiltrate the patient lung and inflate it. To prevent rebreathing during spontaneous ventilation, fresh gas flow should be at least two and a half to three times the patient minute volume. 
please take a moment to see this diagram for explanation. The fresh gas flow here in this circuit is near the patient and the expiratory end is away from the patient. This is the exact opposite of the McGill circuit. Note the action of the expiratory gases that contain carbon dioxide represented in pink and the inspiratory gases that contain the fresh gas flow I think this is very obvious this is the shape the real shape of the RSTPs this is the face mask this is the fresh gas tube that is connected to the fresh gas um, outlet in the anesthetic machine and this is the bag this is the corrugated tube where the expiration occurs and this is uh, uh, this end is opened to expel any expiratory gases from what about the Venn circuit it is a coaxial circuit Coaxial means one tube inside the other, in which the fresh gas flow through a narrow inner tube, this is the fresh gas and this is the narrow inner tube, within an outer corrugated tube, as we can see here, exhaust gas enter the corrugated tube and are vented via the expiratory valve near the reservoir back here so here the gas fresh gas is near the patient as we can see and the exit port is away from the patient it is made of lightweight plastic easily sterilized reusable and is cheap Ben circuit it has an extra length that allows the anesthesia machine to be well away from the operative field thus it is popular for head and neck surgery during spontaneous ventilation fresh gas flow of 100 to 150 milli per kg is required to reduce rebreathing but Unlike McGill circuit, it is more efficient during controlled and during spontaneous ventilation. Fresh gas flow of 70 milli per kg is sufficient to maintain normal PaCO2, i.e. there is no rebreathing. Please take a moment to see this diagram for explanation the fresh gas flow enters from here in the inner tube and goes to the patient so the gas fresh uh, is near the patient and not away from the patient the expiratory gases goes in the corrugated rubber tube and outside the expiratory valve here This is how it looks. The inner green tube is the one that carries the fresh gas flow. This one, of this end, is uh, where it is connected to the patient. The face mask is connected here. This is the expiratory valve. And as you can see, here is the fresh gas inlet that is connected to the anesthetic machine. AmboBag. Clinical uses of AmboBag is to do CPR, which is cardiopulmonary resuscitation, during transportation of the patient, intraoperative emergency if the anesthetic machine 
uh, was uh, ruined or the anesthetic gas in the anesthetic machine was cut off. So we use this to sustain the patient till we solve the problem. The AMBO bag is composed of non-rebreathing valve near the patient that only allows the air to go through the patient to the patient and not the expiratory air oxygen inlet to attach the ambu back to an oxygen source air inlet which is another unidirectional valve that only allows the air to go from the atmosphere to the ambu bag here and the self-inflating bag made of plastic. And thank you.